My name's Hugh Possingham. I'm a professor of ecology and mathematics at the University of Queensland. We've thought a lot about the impact of climate change on marine species and marine ecosystems. Now we need to think about what are we going to do about it? How can we manage those ecosystems so that they persist into the future? And as we know, it's incredibly important to maintain these marine ecosystems. We need to maintain them for future generations because of provision of fish and food. We need to maintain them because those marine ecosystems provide the infrastructure of the entire tourism industry in many coral systems. We also need to maintain these ecosystems to provide for future generations. So we know that climate change is going to impact species and ecosystems. We know that corals are going to be bleached. The question is, what actions can we take to stop coral bleaching? Clearly, stopping climate change is beyond what most local communities can do. We also need to remember that there are multiple stresses on marine ecosystems. Some are caused by climate change and others are caused by other things. And this has an analogy in terms of human health. People in hospitals are rarely being affected by one stressor, which might be a particular disease. Often they may be malnourished, they may have one or two diseases, and even when they're hospital, there will be other stressors on their system that altogether affects their health. So it's a matter of managing multiple stressors. In marine systems, we have many stressors, and some are more or less unmanageable or unstoppable. Some are manageable stressors. So a lot of the climate change stresses are things at a local scale we can't do much about. Increasing temperature, elevated CO2, changes in the frequency of hurricanes, rising sea levels. At a local scale, we can't stop those things. But at a local scale, we can do things about fishing pressure. We can do things about nutrients and sediments that are coming into the ocean. We can look at the impact of anchors on the seabed floor and corals, and also we can restrain how we develop the coastline. These are things we can do something about that can help possibly with the impacts of climate change. One way of us adapting to and managing for climate change is to find refugia and protect those refugia. So imagine we have some coral reefs and we know something about ocean warming. Some areas are going to warm more than other areas. If we can find those areas that are going to warm less, and identify those areas of coral reefs, then that's the place to concentrate our protection efforts because those areas are going to retain their coral communities even under climate change or retain more of their coral community. But it's not just a matter of protecting places that are more resilient to climate change now and into the future. We often need to think about protecting places that don't have the species we're concerned about now but might in the future. So let's imagine mangroves, and how do we protect mangroves as sea level rise? As we know, the sea level rises, and the nearshore marine communities will respond to that sea level rise by moving upwards and towards the land. However, if we've uh, put infrastructure where the mangroves are moving to, like houses and roads, there is no place for the mangroves to be. So it's quite critical there we protect places that don't currently have that ecosystem but we predict that ecosystem will occur there in the future. 